Okay, so the game has changed for everything that is happening in AI, artificial intelligence, new technology. Over the past week, Google had their big announcement and so did OpenAI. And instead of doing a few small videos on each specific feature, I wanted to do just one. And I really wanted to talk about what all of these changes are and what that means for everyone who doesn't quite understand what to do with it yet. I'm also talking to the people who have been thinking, well, this is cool, but it's not for me, or not into it, or even so, what do I do with all of this stuff that just keeps coming out? I am going to go over absolutely everything in a few moments, so keep watching and I will dive right in. And first of all, if you are new to the channel, my name is Ben Silverman, and I am focused on just this, making AI accessible to absolutely everyone. And I'm going to let everyone into all of these updates so they know how it will benefit or sometimes even hurt them. I thrive on making this information available to everyone in an easy to digest way so people can decide on their own how to act. Not to be dictated on how to do so when it is too late. I put out a newsletter once a week and I will leave a link to that in the description. And I have an AI toolbox which I will be updating quite a bit soon with everything that I am learning and I am digesting. It is important to be on the cutting edge so you can operate at your full potential and take advantage of all of this time that we have. And really to be able to take advantage of one of the, the biggest moments in uh, history. Okay, so let's jump in. Over the past week, OpenAI just made their spring update and Google had their annual I.O. conference. I also attended an event out in Los Angeles called AI on the Lot which brought people from across the globe to Hollywood to talk about the implications of what AI will do to the entire entertainment industry moving forward. The overarching theme here is to focus on adoption of AI at the highest of levels. Until then, this AI thing has been about a bunch of people like me getting really excited and sharing their excitement with everyone that they know. That time has come to an end. After this week, the features used by a select few will be commercially available to everyone in the world. So first, let's talk about why do we even want to use AI? Well, AI will make us more productive, it will make us more efficient, and believe it or not, it will even make us more creative. It will allow all of us to have superpowers that fill in our gaps and allow us to emphasize our passions and hopefully free us up to do amazing things and the things that we are really passionate about and focused on. Let's start with OpenAI and their spring updates with ChatGPT. One of the main reasons that mass adoption hasn't happened yet is because it hasn't really been commercially available to everyone at the highest levels for free. The internet bubble started to rise when the Mosaic browser was released in November of 1993, allowing everyone to get online. That became Netscape, which released its Navigator browser in 1994. Navigator grew from 20% of the browser market in January 1995 to almost 80% in less than 12 months later. Now you'll be able to mark this week as to when that happened for AI in the future. So ChatGPT launched their 4.0 model, O standing for Omni, which will be free for absolutely everyone across the world, including browsing the internet, uploading documents, access to their vision and their voice models, which lets GPT understand what your camera sees or your microphone hears. Now, they even are now allowing for everyone to access their GPT store. Most people I speak to don't even know what they are. You can think of GPTs like a personal assistant who is really smart in one area. Developers connect them to their knowledge base of information that AI can feed off of. And us, the end user, can download these GPTs to be much more focused on the specific subject we're dealing with. I did an entire video on GPTs, which I will leave in a link right here. Now, one of the more impressive moments also came when they brought up their assistant with zero latency. If you have used any of these models, you would notice that it would pause before it gives you an answer. This is one of the most complex issues that needed to be solved. And they did that. You can talk to the AI as you talk to a friend. The use cases for this have given way to way more than what people thought were possible, which is why it's so easy to compare it to the early 2000s. It does draw examples to the movie Her, or for those of you who watched Quantum Leap, we all are getting our very own personal Ziggy very soon. Education has also changed forever this week. Putting this device into everyone's hands is going to allow people to understand things like never before. Hello there. 
I'm here with my son and I'd love you to tutor him on this math problem, but don't give him the answer. You can ask questions and nudge him in the right direction, but I really want to make sure he understands it himself. And he's here in the room, so you can talk to him directly. Of course. I'd be happy. Let's look at the problem together. Can you first identify which side of the triangle or the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse relative to angle alpha? All right. So I'm pretty sure this is the angle alpha right here, right? Fixed. Construct. Now, looking at the triangle, which side do you think is the hypotenuse? Um, are you guys on me? I'm not totally sure. I think, I think it might be this one, but I really am not sure. The side AC. You're close. Actually, side AC is called the adjacent side to the angle. B. I'm going to leave a link to where you can find all of these videos in the description. But that's insane. It can even be used as a personal translator with zero latency. It is quick translation too. When this happened, the Duolingo stuck even plummeted. This is one of the problems when bigger companies start to incorporate everything. A lot of smaller companies were building these models individually, but the, the kings and queens of the industry are always going to incorporate these tools into their toolboxes that people already use today. So check this out. Who requests for what they would like us to try out here? So, Lation. Mark, you want to try this one? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Right. Yeah. I, I speak yeah. Italian, so in okay. Swedish, I'll let you know. I didn't know you were Italian. Sure, let's do it. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. How about you? How are they going? I'm uh, doing great. So, I am, would like you to function as a translator. I have a friend here who only speaks Italian, and I always speak English. And uh, every time you hear English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Is that good? Perfecto. Like, io mi chiedo se i balenet potessero parlare. Cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve the debate? Potrebbero chiederci. Come risolviamo le equazioni lineari? Sicuramente sì. Hmm? Certainly yes. I mean, this is insane. All this to say that OpenAI is making all of this free to the end user. This is going to be a huge deal when it comes to commercial adoption, which is the most important piece to this whole puzzle. Now, I obviously thought all of that was amazing and still do. But after watching the Google I.O. conference the next day, it made me gasp even wider. Google has knocked it out of the park. They truly have. Now, I wouldn't hold on to that too much because there is a chance that OpenAI is partnering with Apple for their announcements. Here are some of the latest updates that Google will be adding over the next couple of months to all of their products and their workspaces. They even made a comparison to Taylor Swift's era tour, calling this the Gemini era. And well, it, it actually just might be. Google introduced AI overviews inside of their Notebook LM. Inside of Google's Notebook LM, you can upload all of your documents and materials you would like this notebook to be able to understand. For instance, if you are a student, research homework documents, text for anything you are studying. For those who understand AI and chatbots, it feels much like a knowledge base that you are now able to interact with. Now, this has already been around for around a year now, but what they introduced this year are AI overviews. Now, in these overviews, it can give you in text form, but they are also able to create an audio overview, which is much like a podcast, with one huge exception. It is about all the material that you want it to be about, and you can even interrupt the podcast to get your own AI host to answer your questions. Right? Check this out. We want that five pro. It instantly creates this no fit die with a helpful salary and can generate study guides and updates here or even quizzes. But the live side can listen to solve it. So we prototype a new feature with Gemini and it's called audio overviews. Notebook LM is going to take all the materials on the left as input and output them into a lively science discussion 
personalized for him. Let's take a listen. So let's uh, let's dive into physics. What's on deck for today? Well, uh, we're starting with the basic force in motion. Okay. And that, of course, means we have to talk about Sir Isaac Newton and his three laws of motion. Ah, uh, yes. The foundation for understanding how objects move and interact. Ah, uh, yes. This is where multimodal really shot. Now, he generated this audio discussion based on that text material. And what's amazing is that my son and I can join into the conversation and steer it whichever direction we want. When I tap, join. Hold on, make a question. What's up, Josh? Yeah, can you give my son Jimmy a basketball example? Hey, Jimmy, that's a fantastic idea. Basketball is actually a great way to visualize force and motion. Let's break it down. Okay, so first, imagine a basketball just sitting there on the court. It's not moving, right? That's because all the forces acting on it are balanced. The downward pull of breath. Pretty cool, right? Insane. These overviews are going to pop into Google Meets and even tell you about your emails. You can literally listen to all your emails like it's a podcast. And if you don't want to watch a video but want a summary, think about how this changes education. Google also introduced their new Gen AI models. Imagine 3 is their text-to-image model, and VO is their video model, which definitely can start competing with the likes of Midjourney and Sora. Now imagine photos are now more photoreal, including richer details with fewer artifacts. They have focused the model to understand prompts that are written by people, so there's less of a learning curve. And the more details you give, the higher quality of the image that you get back. Their text-to-image models have also gotten way better. You can find all of these on their labs.google.com, but there's video effects. Here's the notebook that we just talked about, image effects and video effects. Um, yeah, here we go, it, like AI overviews and search, which we just talked about, image effects. Experiment at the intersection of AI and creativity. You can make music, you can make images. Google's VO is Google's new text-to-video model, which is going to give OpenAI Sora a run for its money. This incorporates all the models that Google has been working on in the past, like Lumiere, which I've done a video on, and they are incorporating all of their research into this VO model. Let me show you some of what I mean. Now you could find it on uh, labs.google.com, but here right here is you can join the wait list. So check this out. This is alpacas wearing knit wool sweaters, graffiti background sunglasses, brightly colored blue air doll dancing like crazy in a parking lot, a crochet elephant in vibrant colors walking in the savanna. These were just text prompts a, a gliding POV shot of a road biker descending winding mountains, breathtaking views. This literally is just a text prompt which created these videos. It's way better than any stock footage that I've gotten. Now, Google DeepMind has been working on Project Astra, which is beyond impressive. They're like universal AI agents for everyday life, basically like your own personalized companion. Yes, on the dark side, it feels a little bit more like her, the film released a while ago, but there are also plenty of ways this can be enormously helpful. The goal of these agents is to be proactive, teachable, and customizable to you with response time that feels conversational. This is also similar to what OpenAI just revealed. One of the more impressive features is it will have access to your real-time camera and will be able to recognize everything in your surroundings. It does feel a lot what like Meta Ray-Bans is trying to do as well, and it will have spatial understanding and memory which I'm gonna show you in a second what that means. What's interesting here is that all of those wearable devices that companies are going to be making and that already have like the Humane Pin and the R1, they're able to click right into the APIs here created for these features. Now check this example out, watch this. Okay, let's do some tests. Tell me when you see something that makes sound. I see a speaker which makes sound. What is that part of the speaker called? That is the tweeter. It produces high frequency sounds. Give me a creative alliteration about these. Creative crayons color cheerfully. They certainly craft colorful creations. What does that part of the code do? This code defines encryption and decryption functions. 
It's used to use AESCBC encryption to encode and decode data based on a key and an initialization vector, IV. That's right. What neighborhood do you think I'm in? This appears to be the King's Cross area of London. It is known for its railway station and transportation connections. Do you remember where you saw my glasses? Yes, I do. Your glasses were on the desk near a red apple. I mean, come on. That's incredible. Google's Gemini can even build you an entire vacation itinerary in a matter of seconds. It will blend personal information with public knowledge. Something that took days or even weeks for some can happen instantaneously. Now, I know some people like the planning process, but now instead of spending it all on the busy work of, of searching and, and sifting through all of this stuff, you can just focus on enjoying seeing and changing what it is you actually want to do. The information is dynamic, and you can even chat with it to make changes. Now, Google knows where it began, and it isn't going to let search get taken away by others. Even though I do love my perplexity, one of the coolest new features is you can search with video. You can take a video of something you want to know about or ask a question about and say a broken record player. You want to fix this broken record player and it will break that video down into frames to find the info that you need and get you back the appropriate response from the video. They're claiming that they're not training their models on the videos you upload. Google is organizing your search results into your own custom web pages for your search. So all of the details come into this one web page that they made custom for you and giving different perspectives. So you're open to many different things that you could find on your own in different ways when you search. If you have been to the Google app, you can even circle an item in an image that you upload and it will find that item for you. It's insane. And there's always been this argument of what type of phone to buy. Apple or Android, Google is trying to give you some more reasons to choose Android. They are making their Gemini Nano way better direct to device. It also allows for security and privacy. It allows you to search your screen and pull up Gemini at any moment to help you understand something or complete a task for you. It will even identify if a caller that has called you is unsafe based on the conversation that you are having. I know. Apple has released a few plans that make me feel like they are working on some ideas that are similar, and if they have partnered with ChatGPT, that will make things really interesting in a month from now. All of this is to say that AI is no longer an option. To opt in or to opt out of, you have to understand what it is. You have to be on the cutting edge. It is here. It is getting more advanced. There is a lot of competition pushing each one of the models further and faster. And there are so many opportunities to make the most from this new technology, whether it is to make your day easier through communication or give you the abilities that you never had until today. What everyone does with these newfound abilities over the next 10 years will be the most exciting part, right? So please check out labs.google.com. Check out the the features in, uh, in OpenAI. Check out OpenAI, check out the GPTs, really play around, and I'm going to keep you updated on everything as it comes out. Please stay tuned. I'll be making more videos. I'm going to dive deeper maybe into each one of these tools as we come up, but I really wanted to get this video out and, and really share with you all the latest updates that have arrived and that will be arriving in the next couple of months. It's super exciting.